I'm suffering from dementia, and at this point in my life, I thought my family would be there for me. But then I overheard two very, very close people to me, my stepdaughter and my daughter-in-law. I heard them having a conversation. It was about their inheritance from me after I pass away. And guys, what they were saying is absolutely revolting, toxic, and disgusting, and I have all the information right here for you guys. Hey everyone, I'm in a bit of a pickle right now, to say the least. I could use some advice or just some supportive comments from all you people out there. There's quite a bit of background information to cover, so please bear with me. This is going to be a long post. My name's Jim. Without tooting my own horn too much, I'm a wealthy retiree, and I've been enjoying retirement. Up until now, I've enjoyed a close and prosperous relationship with all my family members, and can look back on my life with contentment and ease. Yet, things are often not what they seem in life, and even at my age, one can be thrown curveballs and bombshells that can seemingly unravel everything for us. Namely, I was recently diagnosed with early stages of dementia. It was something I'd always been aware of, considering it does run in my family. However, actually being given the diagnosis threw me for quite a loop. When I got the dementia diagnosis, I was absolutely scared. Luckily, I had my supportive family by my side, and two family members in particular began spending a great deal of time with me, and once they found out about my diagnosis, my stepdaughter Layla and my daughter-in-law Sally. Well, I've always had a good relationship with both of them. The two of them started spending an unprecedented time around my home, offering to help with errands and housekeeping and general chores. I appreciate this, I truly do, but my dementia is not yet at the state where I would require care and assistance around the clock. Still, I did not want to come off as if I did not appreciate what Layla and Sally were doing to help me, so I simply gave them a thanks for their kind and, well, went about my life. Frankly, it often got a bit overbearing having them constantly asking if I needed help doing this or help doing that. Like I said, I can still feed myself, bathe myself, and put on my clothing and all that. But I also considered that maybe they were just starting early since dementia often progresses to a point where those diagnosed required full-time care. Well, let's just say I found out why Layla and Sally have been hovering around me so much lately. Yesterday... I was taking my afternoon nap in my study, as is my custom since becoming a retiree several years back. Layla and Sally were, of course, wandering around my home and cleaning and just keeping themselves a bit busy. I awoke from my slumber and overheard whispering. Initially, I was a tad disoriented upon waking, but I soon realized it was Layla and Sally's voices. They were speaking in the other room just outside my study, unaware I could hear every single word that they were saying. What I heard them say absolutely broke my heart. Layla and Sally were in no uncertain terms talking about how they were going to, quote, take all my money in the will. They said, I would have no choice but to cut them into the will since they're doing all these errands for me and helping me out so much. It must not have dawned on them at this point that I had not asked them for any help. The most hurtful part of what they said was when they were talking about how once my dementia reaches a certain level of severity, they apparently believed that they would be able to quote, dupe the old dude. Uh, myself, I presume, into giving them my expensive and spacious house and my three prized vehicles and so on. While I'm being glib about the matter at the moment, it has been frankly quite devastating. I laid there in my study, pretending to sleep for a few more moments. I wanted to confront the two of them right then and there, but I knew it would not be a good idea. When I finally exited the study, I greeted Layla and Sally as if I had not heard a single thing. It was difficult to keep my composure, as all I wanted to do was scream at them. But... 
I decided to keep my cool and wait for them to leave before I escalated matters. I've known Layla and Sally for oh so long, and I have long considered them family. I love them both dearly, and the betrayal I feel right now is so immense I can hardly put it into words. The funny thing is, they were both already in my will. I've had them in my will for over 20 years, because I've considered them family for even longer than that. I'm devastated that they would say things like this about me, and it just casts a suspicious light on our entire relationship. Have they always had these negative feelings for me? Have they always merely wanted my money? My wealth is no secret, but I simply thought Layla and Sally were better people than that. Well, I took Layla into my home when I married her mother when Layla was a teenager. We were always close. When her mother passed away, Layla and I often bonded and spent time together dealing with the grief. I treated Sally like a family member right away as well, and she may be my daughter-in-law, but I've always tried to treat her as if she were my daughter, and here they are betraying me like this. Still, knowing I could not sit around moping, I immediately called up my lawyer once Layla and Sally went home that evening. Together with my lawyer's expertise, I was able to redraft my will and remove Layla and Sally entirely. I decided to divide my assets amongst my trusted family members who have not been engaging in any shady or suspicious behavior since my dementia diagnosis, like my adopted son, Bobby. Here's the thing. I know this is going to cause some serious drama in my family, and frankly, with the stress of the dementia diagnosis and the trials and tribulations of having to readjust my life to that information, I'm not sure I can even handle all this right now. While I'm coming here to vent and get this off my chest, I'm also interested in any input from commenters who would like to leave me some advice or supportive words as to how to proceed with this matter. Part of me thinks maybe it's too harsh to remove Layla and Sally from my will entirely. Maybe. I misunderstood what they said, and here I am making excuses. I know deep down I did not misunderstand what they said. I guess I'm still just a bit in shock. It hurts to know people you cared about don't share the same feelings towards you. I... Also wanted to ask you all on this thread and how you feel about this idea I have. I have a family gathering planned for tomorrow night, and I figure that family gatherings are a good time, as any, just to share my new revised will to the entire family. I think the other family members deserve to know what Layla and Sally were conspiring behind my back to do. If anything, just so they don't let it happen to them if that ever comes along down the road. I don't want to embarrass them, but I think some attention should be called to the fact that they have plans to take advantage of an old, retired man with dementia. I did call my adopted son Bobby and ask him what he thinks about all this. He was absolutely shocked by what Layla and Sally said, but he also told me he was not too surprised. He agreed with me that it was strange how often Layla and Sally had been hanging around my house and just trying to spend so much time with me, when they have never wanted to spend this much time with me before. Bobby admitted that he had already been suspicious about Layla and Sally trying to go over my money even before this whole ordeal got started. Believe me, folks, I have half a mind to call Layla and Sally myself and tell them exactly what's going on. But then I would not get the satisfaction of seeing the looks on their face and the entire family's faces once I exposed their fraudulent and, well, bad behavior in front of everybody. In fact, Layla and Sally both offered to come over today to help me with cooking, cleaning, and so on. Today I'm depressed and feeling confused, and I honestly could use the help today, but I don't even want to see those two. I told them in no uncertain terms that they should not come over. Layla asked me what was wrong, and I just said I didn't feel like being around anybody today. I told her I'd see her tomorrow at the family gathering, and she told me she loved me, and she hung up the phone. I didn't say it back this time because I did not want to indulge her lie any longer. 
guys, I've got a lot on my plate right now. Thank you to everyone who read this, and I could use your advice right now. What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So today's story is Betrayal. I want to hop into some of the comments from the original post before we jump into the update, because some of these comments did give good advice, and I want to go over three of them. Comment number one says, Man, I'm so sorry you're going through this, Jim. You just know that we're all here for you. I can't believe the audacity of Layla and Sally to plan something like this right under your nose. Look, it's clear that their intentions were not good. You made the right choice by revising your will. As for sharing this at the family gathering, that's a tough call. But honestly, they need to be held accountable for their actions. And yes, it might cause drama, but sometimes the truth hurts. Do what feels right to you. Sending love and support your way, brother. Comments. Number two. Wow, this is heartbreaking. Can't imagine how betrayed you must be feeling, and I think what you're contemplating, while dramatic, is absolutely necessary, Jim. But my advice is, you should confront Layla and Sally privately first, let them know you're aware of their scheme, and you've revised the will, and gauge their reactions based on that, because they might still deny everything. Then you can decide whether or not to share it with the rest of the family at the gathering, but remember... Your health and well-being comes first. Don't let anyone take advantage of you, not even family. Comment number three. Holy moly, Jim, this is just wild. I'm truly sorry for the pain and shock that you're dealing with, and just remember that your dignity and peace of mind are more important than anything. I say drop the bomb at the family gathering. It'll be dramatic, yes, but let it be. They need to realize the gravity of their actions and intentions, and sometimes it takes a drastic situation for people to understand their wrongdoings. As for removing them from the will, you did what you had to do. You're stronger than you think, and remember, we're all here for you. Okay guys, Mr. Redito here, so that's all the commenters. Let me know down below who you agree with more, comment 1, comment 2, or comment 3. Now it's time to jump into the first update. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead, hit that subscribe button for daily videos and to help support the channel. We're almost at 100k subscribers, guys, so smash that subscribe button. And here is your first update. Hey everyone, Jim here. Back for an update, but first I would like to say thank you to those of you who left kind and supportive comments. I'd also like to thank those of you who gave thoughtful and intelligent advice. You've all given me a great place to vent and get this hurtful news off my chest, so I definitely appreciate that. A lot of people have been asking about the family gathering and what ended up happening. Well, I'm here to tell you about it. Family members began arriving at my house early in the day, and I got a lot of well wishes and kind words of supportings regarding my recent dementia, which I appreciated. Then I saw Layla and Sally. They had no idea what was in store for them, and they were both being friendly and sweet, but I knew this time that they were being fake snakes. Still, I kept my composure and remained calm and amicable with them. I did not want them to suspect anything before my big reveal at the dining table. Dinner was going so smooth, although I was having a bit of trouble focusing on the conversation with others as time passed, and it got closer to closer to the big announcement regarding my newly drafted will. Finally, amidst all the commotion, I decided to bang a fork on my wine glass, and it was time to give a speech. As the recently diagnosed dementia patient and the family patriarch, everyone stopped their conversation politely to allow me to speak. Now, it was my time. My actual speech was long, so I'm going to spare you guys a bit of the details and just summarize it here. I confronted Layla and Sally in front of the entire family and let them know that I overheard their conversation about me while I was napping in my study. I also produced a copy of my will, just to read it out to the family, letting everybody know that Layla and Sally had both their names crossed from the list. Immediately, commotion broke out across the dining table, and accusations just started flying across the board. Layla and Sally immediately began playing the victim card, and trying to make this about them. 
talking about how they'd been helping me with so much lately, blah blah, I firmly let them know that I did not even ask for their help, nor did I even need it. And I dismissed them and told everyone to leave because I needed some rest. Update number two. Hey guys, it's Jim again. Okay, I've got another update for you all, and I was feeling so overwhelmed and tired while writing my last update, and I ended it rather abruptly, because I felt I needed to lie down. Well, I wish I could say this situation has resolved itself by now, I don't believe it has. In the few days since the dinner party, I've gotten some great and supportive phone calls and words of encouragement from family members and friends. My adopted son, Bobby has especially been present for me in this dire time of need, and many others have lent me an ear as well. Not at all have been supportive, however. Some people of the family have been deceived by Layla and Sally's lies, and have called to tell me so, and these phone calls tend to be short. I mean, I'm 72 years of age, and I don't have much time left on this planet. I hung up on quite a few of those people who felt the need to give me their unsolicited opinion on the matter. And naturally, of course, Layla and Sally themselves have been trying to weasel their way back into my life. They've been asking about, quote, working things out, offering to come over and clean my house, which is already clean, mind you. And each call is shorter than the last as I've grown tired of entertaining their silliness. I got Bobby to show me how to put Layla and Sally's phone numbers on my ignore list. I don't know a whole lot about technology, but Bobby is a wizard when it comes to that kind of stuff. Most importantly, however, I've been working closely with my lawyer to make sure my will is stronger than titanium. Layla and Sally's vitriol became more apparent with each phone call, and their viciousness grew as it became clear that neither of them we're going to get their way. I have a hunch that the two of them have some more tricks up their sleeve, and I want to make sure my will stands up in court, just in case any of them want to try to have some funny business with me. I'll let you all know where this new development goes. Update number three. Howdy folks, it's Jim. I'm back for another update, and if you've been keeping up so far, you'll know that Layla and Sally are not too happy about what's transpired with this business between us and my will. I've been consulting with my lawyer, working on making this document airtight as possible it can be, and just in case Layla and Sally want to try to contest it. Well, turns out my suspicions were once again correct. Let me preface this by saying Horton Reed, a 50-year-old male, is one of the most unscrupulous, ruthless, and most cutthroat lawyers in my area. I changed his name for some privacy reasons, and I wanted it to sound cool, since this is a small town where word gets around, but Horton Reed, who you call when you want something done. Well, who else but old Horton did I receive a letter from in the mail this afternoon? I'm not surprised Layla and Sally are deciding to pursue legal routes in a shallow attempt to secure my fortunes. In fact, I had a strong hunch this would be the case. I am, however, surprised they hired Horton Reed. Reed is no new kid on the block. He's one of the best lawyers in town, and this tells me Layla and Sally mean business. They're looking for some sort of vengeance. So, I need to make sure my defense is pretty airtight. The letter says that Layla and Sally are suing me for mental health damages and pain and suffering inflicted upon them due to my having removed them from the will. And they're also trying to contest the contents of my will on the grounds that my early dementia diagnosis disqualifies me from drafting a will. I know most judges would just see through a case like this and throw it into the curb immediately, but the fact that Layla and Sally hired Horton Reed, adds a considerable amount of gravity to the case. This could be a tough one, considering Reed will stop at nothing to win. And he's a flamboyant lawyer who brings in a considerable amount of publicity. This is a small town like I've mentioned, and I know people are already gossiping about my business. Not to boast, but I'm technically, well, the richest man here in town. 
So this would not be the first time my money was the subject of discussion, but the fact is that my own family is trying to take it from me is the most embarrassing part. Update number four. It's Jim again. I am back for another update, and I need to vent. I could go for some good advice. I had my first court date today, and it went horrible. I was completely blindsided. I mean, I knew Mr. Reed was good, but I did not know that he was that guy. I thought this would be a cakewalk, but I was wrong. My lawyer and I went to court today. Under the assumption that the airtight professional nature of my will would be enough to prove my competence, and I don't know, I just assumed Layla and Sally's frivolous lawsuit would be dismissed accordingly. Neither of us happened to be prepared as we thought, and we quickly realized it once we saw Horton Reed in action. Layla and Sally, they hardly even said a word, such was the rhetorical prowess of Reed. He had the judge in the audience in the palm of his hands. The bombshell that was dropped in court today was that Mr. Reed had somehow managed to secure a medical document related to my dementia health. Apparently, Reed uncovered proof of a particularly rough day that I'd been having. You see, I was suffering from a lot of confusion that day, so I went and saw the doctor. I guess Mr. Reed was able to get the facts on this somehow. Things definitely did not look good for me in court. The goal of Reed's story was to cast doubts on my competence. Now that the judge is thinking I'm a confused old man, there's a real possibility my will's going to be nullified. If my will is considered null and void, that means Layla and Sally could possibly get control of my will and make themselves rich with my money. Even my lawyer did not have a defense prepared for such a bombshell. I'm feeling down about all this. I thought that I'd be able to win this one pretty easily, but it looks like Layla and Sally, they came to court more prepared than I did. So, I can't understand why they're doing all this to me just for a bit of money. Their greed is absolutely disgusting. My last option is to consult a local media expert named Dr. Robert. He's 50, male, and Dr. Robert has worked with me before, and he often helps in legal matters. Other than that, I'm open to any advice you guys have for me. Update number five. Hello people, it's Jim again with the final update. I know it's been a little while since my last update, but I figured, hey, I owe it to you guys to let you all know and wrap this up since I've had some people asking about it. Dr. Roberts helped me in court immensely. He teamed up with my lawyer and was able to work out a masterful defense that proved Horton Reed to be merely grasping at straws. While my confused dementia episode was acknowledged, yes, Dr. Roberts was able to explain to the courtroom that my outburst was actually just a bad reaction to a medication that I've been placed on. He proved to the judge and to, well, everybody that I was indeed mentally sound at the time. I drafted the will to exclude Layla and Sally. He explained that my dementia would likely not reach a severe level for quite some time, adding that it was unnecessary for Layla and Sally to have been providing full-time care for me anyways, let alone to be expecting to steal every penny for me over it. Horton Reed was obviously not prepared for such a rebuttal, because usually... He was used to just winning the case flat out and easy. I mean, the judge had no other option but to dismiss Leila and Sally's lawsuit for pain and suffering. And he also threw out their attempt to contest the will. The judge declared that my will was indeed legally binding and 100% valid. And that Leila and Sally would be required to pay the court fees to cover all the time that they had wasted. Bobby was there backing me up in court the whole time sitting in the audience giving me support, and other family members were there with me as well. And since all this happened, it's taught me an important lesson about who my real family is. Sometimes, the people who we think care about us don't always feel the same way. Since the day in court, I have not once spoken to Layla and Sally, and we all stopped inviting them to the family gatherings, and I like it better without them. 
I decided to let Bobby move back in with me so he can be there for me when my mental faculties begin to decline. I know I have a hard road ahead of me, guys, but I'm glad once I'm gone, my wealth and fortune will be going to the right place. Thank you all for reading this. See ya. Well, to be honest with you guys, I'm glad that this happened to Layla and Sally and the family's basically just trying to cut ties with them and tarnishing their reputation. Because what they were trying to do was so sad to OP, who was suffering from dementia, and they even tried to go behind his back, get the best lawyer that they could possibly guess, and try to sue him. Ridiculous, but they end up losing. I do want to hear from you guys, though. Say, for instance, you were in OP's position. And you thought that these family members were here to help you, but it turns out they just want your money. What do you do about it? Drop down your comments down below. Let's discuss this one. Guys, I want to hear directly from you. You know how much I love to read the comments and reply to them and see what my viewers think about the stories. So make sure you drop a comment down below if you guys are new to the channel. My name is Mr. Redito. I narrate stories every single day, and some of the stories are similar to today's topic. They could include inheritance dramas like today, uh, sister-in-law, mother-in-law disputes, Karen in the Wild stories, you name it, we cover it. A story for everyone is what I like to say. Guys, thank you for joining me today. Hit that subscribe button. I'll see you tomorrow, and remember, it's cool to be kind. See ya.